Good morning, Sironika. How are you? Hello. Good morning. Is it clear? Yeah, it's uh, very much clear. Okay, my sound is not that good. Let me just check. Okay. For me, your sound is very much clear. And okay, now... uh, uh, picture is also very much clear. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so um, can we talk a little bit just before we start? Sure, sure, sure. Why not? Okay. Uh, because um, uh, I was wondering about because I I would like to do this interactive uh, way rather than just you know talking. Uh, so that's why my plan is more interactive. I am wondering whether that would work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It will work. Uh, it will work, and uh, everybody will join from their uh, uh, so, Zoom, and uh, they will use their own system. Uh, they will join. Number one. Number two, uh, in remotely, we have opened uh, everything for everyone. For example, uh, they can just uh, unmute their mic and uh, video, they can speak with you. So uh -huh. uh, that also clearly we opened. Uh -huh. As you said, uh, you have interaction. So I made it open for uh, all the students. Uh -huh. yes. So that uh, uh, there should not be any disturbance to them. And uh, you can share, uh, you can check your screen share. Uh, so that I, you can you can able to share the screen also. Okay, shall I shall I check that now? Yeah, yeah, we can we can test it. Yeah. Okay, so I, I think it's working, right? You can just uh, click on the share screen and... Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I checked it, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, good. Clear. Okay, so it will work, right? Yeah. Uh, okay, thank you, uh, Manas. Uh, Professor uh, Dato uh, Paul Chan, the Vice Chancellor of Health University. Our expert, Professor Sharonika, for the two days. I will introduce her a little later because um, she is just one line here. She is one of the experts in the world on OER. I must say that. <laughs> and she is she is from uh, Open University of Sri Lanka have lots of publications, not only the theory publications, the research publications. So I think, and she does a lot of work with Commonwealth of Learning and of course, other international organizations. Um, welcome, Professor Shironika. Uh, Dr. Andy and all my colleagues from the Health University. We were there last week, we learned about the open education resources, what they are, what are various licenses, how the origin was, and so on. So I hope uh, you and other colleagues watch the YouTube, the recording of last week, and then you have been working. The best thing is Professor Dato Paul Chan decided to have an institutional OER policy for the health university. So I will not get into the detail, but um, Professor Sharonika and all the colleagues from Health University, you all know that Malaysia has a national e-learning policy. They have Malaysia's education blueprint 2015-2025, where they have emphasized on the open resources. And then Malaysia also has a Malaysia Copyright Act 1987. 
So like, the point which uh, just I want to emphasize one point here is that Malaysia as a country, as a whole, Ministry of Education, they are involved in the Open Education Consortium. And uh, this is a very important structure movement on OER in Malaysia. Several institutions, again in Malaysia, formal universities, I'm not talking about the open universities. Of course, the two open universities of Malaysia, the Wawasan and the OUM, have their own institutional policy. But some of the other formal universities, like University Malaysia Sabah, University Sands Malaysia, University of Malay, University Putra Malaysia, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, and a few others, they also have the institutional policy. So Vice Chancellor Dato Professor Paul wanted to have their own institutional policy, though they are the formal university, but they want to uh, get uh, or have open and distance education system into it. Hence, we are here to, uh, to learn how to create the policy and we thought in SEMCA, none other than Professor Shironika would be able to help university, help in drafting the OER policy, the institutional OER policy. Thank you so much. Now I request Professor Dato to have a few uh, motivating words because he has been a big motivator not only to his own colleagues in the HELP University, but to SEMCA also for having those collaborative activities. Professor Paul Chan. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Madhu. Your commitment is so strong and so enthusiastic that uh, I cancel a few meetings just to attend all these sessions. And my colleagues, unfortunately, some of them have classes, but all of them have taken notes of the recorded, recorded sessions and they have dutifully been watching them and so on. And under our transformation task force, Professor Liu is in charge of DIP, Delivering Innovative Pedagogy. So he, together with three other task forces, are doing our transformation. So Professor Madhu Yu and today Professor Srin Srinoka. Yes. Uh, thank you so much for giving us a valuable time. All these um, very uh, invaluable inputs and contents for us to fast track our learning for our policy formation. And soon, when we start to learn to execute all this, we will give you a report. And as I mentioned in our last session, I would also like to invite some of our colleagues, including from your institution, to write a small white paper or a research paper based on the experience that we have received from Simca. I think that would be a small exercise on this and, it, and I hope that it can be publishable and so on. I, I leave it to the wise judgment of Professor Madhu and Professor Liu and the other, and the other members. So I won't take up much time. We'll be listening from here. A few others will be joining us soon. Yeah, thank you. Professor Liu, anything to say? Uh, no, no, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Professor Dato Paul um, and Dr. Andy, of course. So I'll uh, hand it over to Professor Shironika. She will be uh, emphasizing more on hands-on. Hands-on means working, drafting, because it is health universities policy. So she will be, she, and let me tell you, she's a hard task master. So <laughs> she will make us work uh, uh, for the next, uh, what will I say, four hours, today two hours, and tomorrow almost two hours. Th 
Thank you so much, Professor Shiro. Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Dr. Chan, Dr. Madhu, uh, Dr. Manas, and Dr. Andy, everybody. So uh, thank you very much for inviting me uh, for this session. Uh, and also thank you for the introduction. Well, well, I think it's too much. I'm not that of much of an expert. Actually, all my experience, I should say that before I start the session, all this experience I have gained uh, mainly uh, working with SEMCA and COL. Uh, I have to acknowledge that uh, since um, 2003, uh, I have been involved with uh, work. Uh, I mean, a lot of collaborative work with SEMCA and COL. Uh, so that's the experience I have gained. So I have to acknowledge that. Um, then the other thing is, um, and also I met Andy uh, in some such workshops as well. So I'm uh, happy um, to be uh, helping the HELP University, as Madhu said. Uh, well, uh, actually, I would like to use the term facilitate because um, now the request made uh, was to uh, help or support to develop your institutional OER policy. Uh, so that's your policy. I mean, it's an institutional policy for the institution. So that's why uh, I will be only facilitating you to develop that, providing any guidance, uh, feedback, uh, and comments, you know, that way. So it will be very uh, interactive session rather than one-way delivery. I, I don't believe in, you know, this transmission model, but uh, even all our active... Um, teaching learning sessions are also very interactive. Uh, therefore, uh, I hope you all have seen um, the work schedule I have uh, shared. Uh, so uh, I can see uh, about 10 participants uh, from the university, I suppose. So it's a, a small group, which is good so that we can make it more interactive. Uh, when it's a small group, it's uh, easy. Uh, so I will just uh, briefly introduce what we are going to do in these two days as an introduction. Um, well, uh, as I understand, you already have had uh, a previous workshop on OER, uh, capacity building, or awareness raising workshop, three-day workshop. Uh, I think Dr. Manas informed me that you already had that workshop. So. Um, so I, I am under the assumption already it's the concept of OER is um, uh, you're all familiar because I'm not going to uh, go into that. So based on that pre-assumption, the workshop is more focused towards uh, developing the policy. So today we will be discussing, uh, if you have gone through the workshop, we will be doing a preliminary discussion or actually brainstorming. Uh, some brainstorming about uh, what is an OER policy and what's the need for an OER policy uh, and what would be the benefits you will gain from having an OER policy as well as what are the key issues to be considered uh, when developing an OER policy because uh, only development of a policy is not enough. After development, of course, you should be able to implement it. Uh, because most of the time policies are developed, but implementation uh, is a crucial thing. So the, whatever the policy uh, we are developing, uh, we should be able to implement it successfully. That's why it's important that you take the ownership of this policy, institutional OER policy. So uh, we'll uh, spend some time on that. Afterwards, I will be introducing to you the called SEMCA Institutional OER Policy Template, which is a great resource. Now, I should say we at the Open, I'm from the Open University of Sri Lanka. Uh, so we have an OER policy. Actually, we are the only institution in Sri Lanka having an OER policy. Uh, and um, we developed in uh, that in 2015, I believe, yeah. Uh, that we developed based on the Vavasana Open University's OER policy. 
if you may remember andy the vavasan open university developed its oer policy uh, that's also based on the consemka template and we we developed based on that so all these policies are there so which we are sharing with each other but they are not exactly the same because different institutions are in different contexts so based on the context we have to uh, change or adapt certain things so that's why from institution to institution it will be different still the core elements would be there so that's why this call template is uh, very useful because it gives a very good guideline uh, or a framework to develop our oer policies so after the brainstorming session we will be uh, talking about the different uh, aspects or the key elements that should be in an oer policy according to the call semka template but we don't have to you know be very strict to it. It, it, it that can be adapted according to your needs uh, then uh, well how to develop your own thing uh, uh, there i would like more involvement or work distributed among the small group that's why i have created a google, uh, google doc template i think dr manas has shared it with uh, dr andy uh, so uh, I hope uh, you will share it with all the participants uh, so that uh, it will be a more collaborative work. So um, that's uh, how we are going to work today and tomorrow. Uh, and um, tomorrow, I, the small groups after working, I would be expecting some presentations of what uh, you have done within today and tomorrow from the small groups. As Madhu said, well, I am very task oriented, uh, so uh, <laughs> you will have to show uh, what's uh, what are the outcomes uh, of this today. But uh, it won't. Uh, I mean, we can't develop this in two days. So this is only a, a beginning, starting point. So whatever we are developing today and tomorrow will be only a very initial framework. But there will be a few more days where you will be working with me online because uh, that's part of the um, process. Uh, whatever um, you are developing, uh, I can review and give comments. And together, we can improve and uh, come up with the final uh, OER policy for the help university. So that's my introduction. Uh, I would stop there and let you, I mean, ask any questions or clarifications before we move on to the uh, real policy work. Are there any clarifications to be made or any questions? Prof. Shranika, when we draft this policy, uh, I, I, I presume it has to be endorsed at the Senate level before we uh, pass it back to Samka, am I right? Yeah, I understand that. Uh, because, I mean, at universities, that procedure is there. We uh -huh. have the, the, yeah. So, uh, actually, getting approval from the Senate is another challenge. I remember, well, I will share my experiences also during the presentations so it's it's a little bit challenging sometimes because you have to justify uh, sometimes uh, it might not be that easy getting the approval because i face that uh, because i'm the one who presented to the senate and got it approved finally uh, though i i should uh, i should give credit to ishan dr ishan who was uh, there at the open so he initiated developing the oer policy uh, but then I, I was the Senate rep, so I had to go in and explain to the Senate and a lot of discussions and finally agree on, finally we managed to get it accepted. Anyway. Uh, At the our, Open Universities level, what was the challenges? Or what were the challenges? I, I, will, I will tell you in the process. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I will, don't worry about the challenges now. First, we, <laughs> first we'll, we will we'll start, because uh, otherwise if you start from the beginning about right, challenges, right, we'll sure. first uh, see the benefits. We'll see sure. the challenges, but how to overcome challenges also, I can 
uh, yeah. give you some tips uh, how to okay. <laughs> challenge yourself to help. Uh, and the other thing is, I want to inform you now. We after five years, actually, we revised this year. We revised, uh, updated because um, there are certain um, changes that has happened in the university because all these policies have to align with the university policies, other policies, right? Uh, right. There are a lot of other relevant uh, or related policies at the institution level and uh, not only policies the frameworks the guidelines the standards of uh, practices so uh, when we make certain changes there uh, and also the oer the the field of oer that that's progressing uh, the definitions sometimes the definitions change they updated different um, uh, some uh, improvements are happening of terminology and ideas. So considering all this, we um, have a revised policy now um, in 2020. So after five years, I think uh, we should be revising our, even our course materials, we are revising every five years. We have a policy like that also. Uh, so um, therefore, uh, I will be sharing with you um, Actually, I have put all those links in the document I shared. Uh, the Vavasan OER policy, uh, OUSL previous, the version one, OUSL version two. And also I added another example uh, recently what SEMCA has done with uh, an Indian university. And also a university, uh, the Fiji, uh, South Pacific, where COL has worked with developing their policy. So some samples I have given so that you can get an idea. So all those things are available. Um, so shall we move forward now? Yes, my please, okay. <laughs> Right. Uh, before right. that, uh, sir, we got the style. I wanted to add a uh, few sentences here. Uh, in a health university, it's a conventional university, no doubt. And uh, policy Sorry? reflecting to, this is, this is the conventional university. All right. And, uh, in that conventional university, they uh, adopted online education and blended learning as well. So uh, um, uh, they, they have started, uh, I don't know whether they have policy or not, not in, in special reference to the online education in the health, in health university and in a clear as well in, uh, in, uh, in a right way. Uh, but however, uh, we need to look into the three four things uh, here uh, to understand that uh, the online education, they are covering some credits from the different programs, number one. Number two, they are also moving to, towards the step uh, in uh, blended learning, which is uh, blend here, the blended is uh, uh, more on face-to-face uh, -face and online, both blend, not online and online blend, or not online and offline blend. It is face-to-face -face and online blend, that kind of blending. And uh, another one is uh, what I understand, they have dedicated uh, LMS, which is Moodle LMS they are using for the offering uh, courses for blended approach as well as for online approach. So these are the uh, few uh, uh, background information what I gathered from the uh, health university. And this is we need to also think in that line. And uh, for Andy, uh, Andy, just I wanted to tell here, this, this entire process will be collaborative process. The, uh, uh, no doubt. Uh, so we are yeah, meeting the staff is here. Help to the team. Yeah. Help to the team, and uh, all of us, each one of us, need to work very closely. I have invited Jerry and others. Yeah. Which uh, uh, Professor Shironika already yeah, shared sorry, with no, us the no. Google Doc, which is. Uh, so can you give me the names? I have the uh, online. We will do. Collaborate. I'll call you. You come. Back. Uh, Collaborative activities. Give me the name. Which, which can uh, help us. They are really. Uh, sorry. Uh, so, which can help us first going to step by step. And uh, no doubt, this is the framework. And But it is the uh, entire decision and the participation uh, yours from Health University. 
So we can do customize into the framework. This is framework which is given. It is the uh, broader conceptual framework just given where you can, hence our team at the health university can suggest because you know better about the health university rather than me and Shravita. So entire team, we need to put our own inputs and thoughts and have more interactive discussion. And this is this request to all of our participants here. Just simple, you need to do unmute your mic and start speak when Sirenika asks, asks for the speaking. So let us do in that way so that the interactivity will be there. Then we can end of the day, Shironika can understand and you all can understand what should go in your policy dialogue. So uh, with these words, over to Sironika. Thank you very much, uh, Manas, for those uh, motivating words. I think uh, we need that sort of uh, motivation and inspiration uh, to start off uh, this session. Uh, thank you very much. Yes, I expect it to be very interactive. Now I see there are like uh, 23 participants, including all of us. So the, that's a good participation. Uh, so uh, let me start then uh, sharing my slides with you. Just give me a second until I share them. Okay, I think you all can see that. So, um, uh, yes, this is, can, uh, can, can you all see the slides? Yes, yes. Or, yes. Or, okay, right. Okay, so um, as I mentioned, uh, okay, why? I mean, we, we would like to uh, answer a few questions here. Uh, what, why, how, and when, that sort of questions right because for anything we have to answer okay what what is an oer policy then why why do we need an oer policy then okay what what okay or like uh, what should be included in an oer policy okay then uh, when when are we going to implement this so that that sort of questions uh, will be there uh, I'm sure those questions will be there in your minds. So uh, before we talk about what is an OER policy, as I understand, uh, you already know the concept about OER. So I would like to start with this slide. What is this? What's the concept here? What's the key concept uh, we are um, promoting using all this OER and OER policies or whatever? Sharing, sharing, sharing. sharing. Sharing, <laughs> sharing. So education is all about sharing. So uh, as educators, I believe we are all in that mindset. Without that mindset, we can't talk about OER or OEP or even an OER policy if we are not willing to share. So that's the key concept which I believe. Uh, I hope all of you uh, have that mindset uh, in order to move forward with this uh, OER policy. Uh, then the other thing, we have all this declaration, I'm sure all of you have heard uh, about this Cape Town Open Education Declaration, which is very, which has been quoted uh, several times, though it's uh, many years back. But the main idea is making the content or the resources open and free for everybody to use. So why, why, what's the need? So that's another thing we have to understand or we have to acknowledge. Why should we, people might ask now, uh, Andy asked uh, the challenges. So one challenge might be people might ask, why should I make my resources open and free for all? That's mine, you know, that sort of, uh, so why? So that's another thing we have to consider. Why this concept of making resources open and free for all to you. So I'm just giving, I'm not giving answers to this. I'm just uh, inspiring or provoking some uh, things for you to, uh, to uh, start your thinking or to activate your thinking about these concepts. Then we all know about this open licensing. Now OER are based off open licensing. I believe you have, um, you all have um, 
learned uh, about all these things during this uh, workshop, uh, previous workshop. So we have a series of licenses, which is in opposed to this all rights reserves, copyright, uh, copywriting, we know about the all rights reserve from that we have moved to the some rights reserve and yeah, there are no rights up to CC, you know, there are, oh, I'm not going to explain the licenses, but I'm sure you have studied these licenses and aware of these licenses and what are the, uh, what are the um, facilities enabled by these licenses and uh, from least open it moves to the most open where either resources are in the public domain or having the ZZO license. So all this, the variety of license, creative commons license are there. So that's another thing I would like to uh, just remind you, um, up, uh, you like the basis of what you have already know. And uh, all these declarations where um, it has been highlighted uh, the recommendations, okay, what has to be done uh, or what are the expectations uh, of this movement, OER movement. So I'm not going to read the whole list. The, the presentation will be shared anyway, but these are all available resources, but they are, I just highlight the need to reinforce the development of strategies and policies on OER. To do all these other things, we need policies, strategies and policies. So that has been highlighted. That's what we are going to do. And even very recent UNESCO recommendations, we have, it outlines five areas of action, like building capacity, which has been done during your previous workshop, uh, and also uh, encouraging and nurturing, promoting, uh, all these aspects, but also developing supportive policy for OER. That's again highlighted there. So uh, I'm just showing the, the significance or importance of having some policy uh, in this uh, uh, OER concept in order to use. Now you all know o OER is not just about having resources, not just about having resources, but the ways in which we use the resources uh, because they have been the it's it's a now we started with the sharing concept actually it's giving access and opportunities for everybody equal opportunities to use resources which are available uh, in the it's not only in the digital form in any form but he, this sharing or this um, uh, giving access or opportunities, it all um, deals with the change of mindset of uh, individuals uh, to be ready to uh, share uh, the resources. For example, uh, okay, the ownership, the concept of ownership. Now I started this um, uh, workshop saying uh, the policy, the ownership of the policy you are creating, but then Okay, you, you, you are developing and you are going to have the ownership, but then you, are, you would be sharing that ownership with others as well. You are not giving away the ownership. So I think that's one important thing we have to bear in mind because sometimes people misunderstand this concept, think that when you give away or when you share uh, your content or resources with others, uh, it will, it, uh, your ownership won't be any more there. That's a wrong, um, wrong um, understanding or a wrong conception. So ownership will still be there. It's not giving ownership away, but it's sharing. So that's the whole concept because you know the five R's, the reuse, revise, remix, uh, redistribute, uh, and retain. All these five R's are there. I'm sure you would have talked about these things. So that means different ways of uh, sharing uh, the resources, giving different types of, um, uh, what do you call, uh, authorities or different types of permissions. They're actually different types of permissions to use resources and adapt them according to your own needs. Now, for example, we are going to use the 
policy template developed by call uh, and there are so many other policies developed by the other institutions so we are studying them maybe we are using some of their content so because they have openly shared but the ownership is there the call policy template the ownership is with call but they have openly shared it with anybody to adapt and use according to our needs but giving due acknowledgement so when we give the due acknowledgement uh, that uh, ownership is always there uh, so that's that's some uh, key um, uh, concept that has to bear in mind because we, why we need a policy. Okay, we'll talk about why we need a policy later. So that that's some key concept that we need to bear in mind when we are developing a policy, as I uh, and uh, as I believe, because you need to be very, uh, you need to have a proper understanding of what we are doing and also the responsibility we have now we are all like educators we are in the field of education we are at universities so as educators we have certain responsibilities uh, and also we have to we have the responsibility of uh, making the others aware of these uh, concepts as well so that's a little bit of um, uh, introductory thoughts then policies okay so why or uh, what are policies so uh, i i understand that you already have now uh, i think madhu mentioned no sorry uh, manas or madhu mentioned that malaysia already has some national uh, oe policies and your university might be having so many other policies all universities have policies so why what are oer policies so you know they are legislations these are legal now even the creative commons licenses that's uh, they have a legal uh, binding there is a legal binding so oer policies are also defined this is a definition i have taken from the creative commons uh, how they have defined institutional pol uh, legislation institutional policies and of uh, fundamentals that lead to the creation increased use and or support for improving oer so that's one definition given by but there may be other definitions as well but the idea is why why poly, we need policies now there are policies as at national levels institutional levels so national levels now in our country we still don't have a national level oer policy institutional level also only we have so it's it's difficult to convince individuals to come this sort of uh, new concept and have a policy on that but then uh, the successful adapt adoption of oer now the whole idea is promoting the adoption of oer if that's to be successful that would essentially require appropriate policy development at institutional levels and national levels okay so i think now uh, if i summarize uh, what i was the whole uh, thing I was trying to uh, say uh, the purpose main purpose is to provide guidance or direction direction in the use of OER in order to increase access and not only that as well as to support quality teaching and learning so how come this quality comes because we have policies and the quality assurance policies also there uh, course material development we have uh, certain policies we are concerned about the quality now uh, one um, some sometimes i mean questions some people ask uh, about this oer about the quality of the material uh, they are worried that the uh, resources uh, openly shared might not be up to the quality so that's a different i mean then okay what what's what's the okay i am just asking you are we are we concerned about that yes quality is a matter of concern but then how does the concept of oer contributes to the improvement of quality or enhancement of the quality because because you are given the uh, given the facility or given the um, permission if you think the quality is can be improved if you think a resource which is has been openly uh, shared the quality you can improve further you are given the permission to do that okay so that 
enhances, everybody can keep on improving. So the improvement also happens in qual uh, quality. So that will support the quality enhancement in teaching learning as a whole in our education system. So I think I have uh, talked uh, a little bit now. Now I would like you to talk. I would like to open up the brainstorming session. Is that all right? Is that all right? Can I start with the brainstorming activity or would somebody yes, like please. to say anything? All right. So um, this is how uh, I would like you to do. Okay, I'm going to open up now uh, different aspects. I would like I would like to give like one to two minutes on each aspect, uh, different people to, you know, brainstorming. As educators, we all know. So just any ideas that pop up in your mind. We'll start with the concept of OER because all these are the core is the concept of OER. So what are the, what are your ideas of concept of OER and its significance? So I will time uh, like two minutes for each, um, uh, each uh, aspect. Uh, so uh, I think uh, anybody can unmute and talk. So I will start here. So concept oh. of OER, um, whatever uh, in a classroom, if I am uh, the, in the transacting, uh, so mostly formal universities, it is an instructionist uh, concept or transaction, like uh, one way. Uh, many of the universities, they are doing two way. That is a constructivist approach. Uh, but majority of the universities world over, and I talk about India. So what I do is for concept of OER is I when I present, so I share my I can share the PowerPoint slides if I have made any to any other colleague of mine from any other university. Okay, so uh, I'm just uh, okay. I'm just typing the keywords that I'm getting from each of your brainstorming so that I can fill up the table later on. Uh, I hope uh, anybody can do that as well. You can take down notes, you can type uh, in your so I am typing in the Google Doc that has been shared with everybody. So, what Madhu, uh, thank you, Madhu, for starting the brainstorming. So, basically, what you're saying is you are very uh, willing, you are willingly share. Uh, whatever um, uh, resource you create with the others. That's the basic idea uh, you say, right? Right. All right? right. Right. Okay. Thank you. So anybody else? Just, uh, just uh, even it's one phrase is enough, a sentence, a phrase, a word even, what you feel about the concept of OER and its significance? Um, I'd like to say something here, it's Andy Hickson. Hi. Uh, what can we say to people that are more concerned with um, IP and their protection of it than with sharing? Mm -hmm. So you're asking a question, is it? It's a question. Okay, we'll, we'll keep it. So, a, question, okay. a question for the brainstorm. Good, good. <laughs> okay, so your, your question is, what about people concerned about IPRs? right intellectual property rights okay that's right. your question right okay yes. I, I, I added that okay yes now there are 20 odd people so at least uh, hi okay yes. okay yes some help um i think um after your short introduction he has really made me to truly understand that um, the OER is really a very convenient source to enhance our teaching skill and also not to benefit the lecturers themselves but to benefit so many stakeholders including the students and I really appreciate the concept of this sharing because it really does enhance the uh, teaching quality for the lecturers here. Okay, so uh, your, do you actually said two things. Uh, it's one, you said uh, it enhances teachers, not only the teachers, many stakeholders. And also you said it enhances the quality of uh, the teaching, right? 
Uh, hello, um, my, my name is uh, Dashne Ganis and I work in uh, Coppercom. I, I just want to say that intellectual property, you cannot, uh, uh, you know, what's the word? Uh, if somebody has the intellectual property, we cannot uh, challenge that. So we have to be careful what is knowledge that we can take and use as a resource and what remains IP because if you take someone else's IP, we could be sued, isn't it? Uh, I mean, please, uh, you know, uh, just clarify for us this issue of IP and what is in yeah. the common domain, sure. you know? Yeah. Okay. So uh, I think you answered uh, uh, that IPR question to some extent. Now you said uh, we can't challenge that because some people would like to have this IP intellectual property because there are, I mean, should we open up everything open and should everything? That's a question we have to ask us. Eh? Or should we, should we be selective? What can be openly shared and what can we take for sharing? So that's why this licensing is there so that we are aware of who has given which rights to what extent. So then we are clear whether we can take this material for openly sharing or adaptation or whether they have not allowed that. So that's the, uh, I think that's the importance of uh, being knowledgeable about the licenses and the IPR as well. Okay, anybody else? Just one more so that we can move to the next slide. I, I think someone else also tried to say something earlier. No, okay. Sorry? Most probably Manpreet written here in the chat box. Ah, okay, uh, okay. Yeah, you can also look into that. Uh, she is telling that OER as a resource repository, not only for the teaching and learning, but also self-regulated learning. Mm -hmm. This is one. Okay, SR, SLR, self-regulated SRL. SRL, okay. self-regulated. Yeah. Okay, so I have, uh, I have noted that, self-regulated. So that's not only for, sorry. Uh, not only for teaching and learning, uh, but also for self-regulated learning. All right. Okay. So uh, shall we move on to the next one then? Uh, next one is okay. Now we, we have some ideas. Okay. I, I just want, I, I would like you also to take um, notes if possible. Um, just a minute uh, because my Google Doc went away. Okay. I'll move to the next one so that you can think about it while I get it back. So this is about basically about OER and its significance. So few ideas came. The so next one is, okay, so if we, are, if we are clear about OER and its significance, why do you need an institutional OER policy? Now this whole workshop is because you thought you need an OER policy, so why? So the need, so I would like to, you to think about that uh, and I will ask a uh, few people to give your ideas. Hello. Okay. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. I think you like to? Yeah. I'm Kim from uh, Help University. The institutional OER policy is really important. It's to protect. It's protect the interests of uh, all parties concerned, including the person who create the uh, intellectual property, and also the university per se. Um, I think a lot of people are quite concerned about, fear about their intellectual property being stolen, uh, mm -hmm. but. To me personally, if you if you feel about your intellectual property being stolen, and that is not a spirit of sharing, which is not a spirit of OER in my view, though we, we still need the some kind of the policy or uh, institutional policy to, to protect all parties concerned, in my view. So you say we need an OER policy to protect protect, protect the institution, protect the um, the authors. Okay. Protect okay. the authors and IPR, right? Yeah, protect IPR. IPR. Yes. Okay, protect Otherwise, the... otherwise no. you will not have 
you will not encourage people to keep on producing intellectual properties in the future. There will be no new development, no innovation. I, I, I agree with you, yeah. Shumin, to a certain extent. This is Andy again. Okay. Uh, yeah. with, and it kind of, your answer relates more to my question than I think Darshin is did. Um, it's, I'm not sure that uh, IP would stop innovation or creativity. Mm -hmm. uh, but my question really was more about how do we persuade people that are concerned with their own IP um, to open it up and be more sharing with it, or at least aspects of it. So, okay. for example, take, I mean, outside of education, take medicine, uh, where you've got so big pharmaceutical companies having their own intellectual property on certain drugs, which mm -hmm. means that uh, lots of people are not able to access those drugs because they're too expensive. All right. Okay. Now, uh, okay, I think we have to understand the concept of open educational resources. Like it's not drugs and things. Okay. They are material. Okay. I think there's a difference. Uh, open educational resources, if you look at the definition itself. So we are here, we are talking about teaching, learning and research materials that are in digital or non-digital format. Right. Okay. And there may be certain materials where people are concerned about protecting the ownership. I think that was the first uh, concern uh, that people are concerned about. Okay, say you, you created, a, you spent a lot of time, a lot of your effort and created, a, okay, you are an artist, you are an artist, you created a very nice um, art, uh, you know, you, you spent a lot of time. Then it's, I mean, you, you are proud of that, you feel it's your ownership, you have the ownership. Sometimes you might not like somebody to come and distort it, right? So, uh, I mean, that, 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 that also somebody said, we have to acknowledge that, that also. If somebody doesn't like that, we have to acknowledge. So we have, to, we have to consider what and to what extent of, I mean, we have to, um, uh, somebody said, we have to acknowledge, um, we can't challenge that people have that mentality, you know? Uh, it's difficult, uh, and he talked about changing. Uh, you mentioned about uh, swaying or changing these mindsets, which is difficult, yes. Now, so those are the things we have to question, okay? It's not easy to uh, suddenly tell people, okay, you have to share everything. I mean, that's not going to work uh, because people have these concerns. What will happen, you know, this copying, we have this uh, notion of copying. Somebody might copy my work. And uh, or after all my hard work, uh, some other person is going to get the credit, you know, that sort of the human, human concerns are there. So um, there are ways of overcoming these issues. We'll talk about those later. But I know that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's an issue. I mean, that's a question to ask. Yes. So shall we get some more ideas and then, yeah. Madhu, you want to talk? Yeah, yeah Shironika, I just wanted to add what Andy said. Health sector is a little different than the education different. sector. Yeah. For example, um, uh, I will not take health sector, but just give an, another example. Like we all drink Coke or we have Pepsi. So uh, both the companies, they have the ingredients or how do they make and they don't uh, let it uh, as an open uh, telling everyone that what ingredient they are using. So, but that's a business model they have uh, because there they are earning, let's say money, finance is involved, but education sector, and even if that is true with the health, like, um, I don't know if I give an example of a uh, paracetamol, a company must, several companies must be making or any cough syrup or whatever. So they are doing it for the, uh, the earning money. Mm. And of course, the basic ingredients, everyone knows. There can be a few ingredients which can be, or the packaging can be different or whatever. But when it comes to the education sector, education sector believes that knowledge should be shared with yeah. everyone. 
so that is i think the only point what uh, i just want to add andy's and when all of us you are talking about we also talk about the intellectual property so like i say why should i share my idea with anyone if i am doing any innovation or something idea why should but at the end of it in education we do that thank you so just wanted to add that one thank you yeah i i i agree with you and it was kind of what i was trying to say it's the people that don't agree with that concept it's it's just how can we persuade people that sharing their ideas is going to be of benefit to all of us even them okay. even if it's their own or they feel it's their own original idea i i can share one uh, experience uh, now when you ask for my experience as now actually i did a survey very at the very beginning points of before even before we had an oer policy just to know uh, with how people feel about these things when we ask okay uh, okay to what extent are you um, copying things from the internet right you know when we are preparing presentations or materials as education we always search the internet google search you just take anything that's the tendency so majority said they just use any you know any information any resource you are taking from the internet uh, and put them into their say preparing a powerpoint presentation you would take uh, anything uh, that some other so what is available on the internet then i asked how how many of you are actually sharing your what the powerpoint presentation you prepared with the others but that was very limited then, then the question is okay then to prepare that one you used others okay so then if you if you have used the others because they already have shared it right if they have already shared that because they shared you were able to use those things so don't you have a responsibility to give it back like that that sort of uh, you know question when you ask like that they tend then only they feel oh now only i realize yeah that's bad i mean i i work with teachers because i come from the faculty of education so i do lots of these workshops with teachers so these issues are there you are very reluctant to share your powerpoints or your materials with the others but you are so happy to use whatever resource whenever we do a powerpoint they will ask madam can i have the powerpoint can we have the powerpoint they would they would like to grab whatever available but very reluctant to share with the others so then then i asked that question i mean i directly asked okay if you are so willing to get from others why aren't you willing to give it back to the others so then they think i mean that's one strategy i use to make them think if you take you have to give back you know that sort of um, moral responsibility uh, that works very good very good Uh, okay so shall we move on to the other one uh, there may be other so the the idea is the, the need okay so the need uh, do you want some anybody want to add anything for the need why do you need i mean as help university why why have you thought about having this oer why do you do you think there's a need for you ironica there is uh, two responses we received uh, in the chat box uh, and, uh, this is uh, uh, talking about to ensure oer materials are used ethically number 1 number 2 uh, we need to come up with common guidelines so we don't cross lines means uh, here cross lines it means uh, misuse the materials and uh, uh, provide authentic uh, uh, attribution to the authors and use of authentic uh, uh materials right uh, and we must not uh, encroach into intellectual property intellectual uh, intellectual property worth a lot of money better to create oer with expired ip this is the uh, actually uh, uh, the concern i didn't understand if the concern person can uh, respond to this concern uh, it will be better but for me being a oer practitioner what i know open educational resources it is uh, it is not uh, completely uh, what i can say that uh, responsible less it is responsible uh, responsibility of the author to make the content which is they are owning number 1 number 2 
why we are only to any resource materials, educational resource materials, it means it is coming under the intellectual property rights. So, where we are talking about the OER thing, means open educational resources uh, giving opportunity to the authors and the creators, those who are developing contents and sharing the contents authentically, which can improve the access to the education, which is the I feel so. And um, uh, one more point, um, uh, uh, Professor and uh, Leo is telling that institutional OER policy is important so that the purpose adoption adoption process by all stakeholders are clear and consistent which is uh, within the uh, total quality so these are the okay. points in the chat box now over to Sirenita. okay thank you very much uh, because i am just typing everything in the google docs as well so it's difficult to look at the chat and do like i, I usually do multitasking but uh, too many tasks, <laughs> it's also a little bit difficult. Anyway, I think you summarized uh, the need for your policy. You know, I, I, I hope I got all the bullet points there. Now we move on to the next one. Okay, so I think uh, most of the things are answered there as well. The need and the benefits, right? So uh, I think, is somebody talking? Or? Okay, so uh, with the need, I think you also mentioned about certain benefits like the opportunities provided to improve access and the opportunities provided to have this authentic uh, material uh, and quality enhancement uh, and having clear guidelines uh, on the adoption and adaption process uh, and uh, provide guidelines on the ethical use of the OER or uh, materials. So I think all those benefits also um, were um, talked along with the need. If there are anything else to add, I will just give uh, one minute for anybody to add anything for benefits for you as a help university academy, as a university. What are the benefits of having an institutional OER policy? Anybody would like to add any ideas? So, sorry, could you repeat the question, please? Sorry, I didn't get that no, question. I'm asking, okay, so we talked about the need and uh, with the need, uh, there's the, I'm asking about the benefits. Do you think it will be beneficial if, if there will be any advantages for the university to have an OER policy, institutional OER policy? Can you think of any benefits for you as an institution? Hello. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm just thinking about uh, since last week um, session, um, mm -hmm. I was thinking about those people that are underprivileged people that mm -hmm. who have no access to computer, mm -hmm. no access to, to education. I think mm -hmm. this sharing will be very, very beneficial to those underprivileged people. And mm -hmm. it's not only doing a duty as an educator, it is a moral mm -hmm. duty in a way. Mm -hmm. Very good. I think that that's the that's a very important thing. We have to think about. Uh, we are talking about education for all, uh, making education accessible to all. I mean, always people are talking about these things, but actually, uh, talking doesn't help. We have to act if we believe in these things that uh, education is a matter of sharing and it should be accessible to all, uh, equal opportunities equal access and when you say underprivileged people that means our students say our students some of them might be having access to lots of resources whereas where you have to pay and you know we have to buy certain things but there may be others who can't afford so that's the main uh, main idea behind this OER concept coming out having uh, accessible uh, resources to all so especially catering to the to the underprivileged people or students and also I, I, I totally agree with your uh, idea moral obligation we all as educators have this moral obligation uh, to uh, share uh, whatever we have 
uh, taken from the public goods, we have to share it back. Okay, so the next one is okay. So uh, when we are trying to, so I think now you you agree. That's why you are having this workshop as an institution. You have agreed there is a need for an institutional OER policy, and there are certain benefits that you can gain from the, there. May be others which you can keep on adding to the Google Doc, which I have shared with all of you. Uh, uh, you can keep on adding, but now think okay, when we are trying to develop a po policy with the intention of uh, implementing it in the future. What are, okay, what are the key issues to be considered? When we are developing, we have to keep in mind, it should be practical, right? So uh, can you think about any issues? Yes, uh, somebody would like to uh, talk about, I'm sure now Andy talked about one issue, I think how to change people, right? How to change mindset of people. I think that's a key issue. Uh, so uh, you asked uh, at the Senate, okay, for example, so if I may share uh, my experience here. Now, originally we didn't have an OER policy, but we have been, uh, I mean, I have been involved with uh, Call and Semka and doing a lot of these OER uh, projects, OER based e learning, for example, uh, what Sanjay Mishra uh, initiated. I have been involved in all those projects. So uh, uh, based on th those projects, I'm called uh, with Professor Som Naidu and uh, Dr. Sanjay Mishra, and we have been doing, been doing a lot of OER projects at the university, be even before the policy came in. So uh, as, a, uh, outco as an outcome of one project, we published a book, right? We published a book of stories. Then I wanted to publish that as an OER because if, if we have done the whole thing on OER, I thought, uh, I mean, of course, we have to publish this book as an OER. But at that time, we didn't have, an, have a policy. So we need to think, okay, if we are publishing as an OER, we need to identify a license. There must be a license. And there are different types of license. Then I had to discuss it at, at some senior administrative yes, level. Yes, so I put on Fiona's certificate. I put back on Fiona's uh, uh, tree. tree. Okay. I put it on her tree. I open it nicely. Okay. I told the girls, take this article. The oh. Okay, uh, may I ask everybody to mute uh, their mics? When, okay. Uh, so, um, okay. So uh, then, uh, you know, then this uh, concern about, okay, now whatever we do for the university, after we do it for the university, it becomes, the ownership is with the university, right? Even though I, I have written something for the university as an academic or others have contributed, finally the publication, the copyrights are with the university. Then the university has to decide, okay, if we are releasing this as an OER, What's the license we have to use? Then we didn't have a policy. Then we had to discuss different people uh, come in with different ideas. They say somebody might take it and change, you know, so, uh, or somebody can even sell it. Uh, but then if, I mean, that's the mindset change. So it's not easy. Then we had to discuss a lot, a lot, lot of discussions. Then finally, through convincing the real concept, all these concepts of sharing and giving back and not be bothered about this, you know, uh, other issues. We have the, we have, we have the um, copyrights as the university, but finally at that time, our first, very first publication of OER was with uh, ND, uh, you know, CCBY, NDSA, no derivatives. Well, at that time, I was also not that, uh, okay, well, not that convincing maybe, uh, but that was the agreement. So our first OER book is ND1, which is really not an OER because ND means no derivatives. Uh, any, you can't just, you know, nobody can take it and adapt it if they wanted to. But afterwards, we realized the need. Now, whenever somebody wants to publish, then you have to have a discussion and come up with a decision. But then, then we realized the need to have an OER policy at the university. Then only we started developing with Ishan's help, we developed the OER policy. And when we developed that, you know, Ishan is also very open-minded and I worked with him. And we, we decided it has to be CCBYSA, no ND. 
So that was something which was very difficult to convince at Senate. You know, uh, at Senate, I had to explain a lot about this concept because people were very worried about somebody taking our material and changing, adapting. But that's the whole, that's the whole idea, I mean, of you have to think it from a different point of view rather than thinking this is going to change what we are. But this is sharing. We are allowing people to come up with innovative ideas and improve in the quality sometimes. So finally, we agreed now our policy is CC by SA. So such issues might be there. So one issue I would say how to change mindset of people and how to come into a common agreement. So those are the issues, challenges, some issues I have faced. So, uh, I mean, can, uh, can you think of any issues you might be facing? Um, I, I would like just to go back to the first point that I made, the previous point that I made about our moral obligation. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I have written a lot of uh, this, um, uh, this commentary on on very high level accounting standards to the uh, regulators in Malaysia and 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 in uh, in in London, but I never put a copyright that I I welcome anybody who adapt who follow my point or even copy my point. I have no problem because mm. my focus is on sharing of knowledge, because people in Zimbabwe may not be may not have access to what I my knowledge over here that I have in Malaysia. I am not too concerned that people copy my view. In fact, you would be worried if nobody copy your view. Mm. Nobody copy your work. But of course, yeah. what are you I, going to do with it? Yeah, yeah what exactly. are you going to do with it? It's no point to have everything copyrighted and nobody and it cannot be put into use to benefit the community. What's Good the point? point? I mean, point. I, I am not against copyrights, but sometimes many people go too extreme to protect their own interests and forget about their so-called social obligation. I'm not saying I'm not saying that everybody should should be should be should, uh, same same do the same thing as I've done. I'm not saying that. But I say what I've done. I have written 100 overs this commentary, and and every time the institution asks me whether I would like to put a copyright, I say no. Just let people share it. No problem. Yeah. In fact, the more people share my copy my view, the better. Because why? I benefit yeah. one person in Malaysia. You will benefit others from other countries. Why not? This yeah. is a this is a free flow education. That's my view. Very good, very good. Yeah. So I, I think that's a change of mindset. So uh, at the initial, it might be difficult for some people to change their mindset. You know, being so tired. But after some persuasion, after discussing with them, after making them realize this sort of idea, many of them change their minds. You know, now, now in our university, there are so many materials that are being shared in the website as OER, our, even our own lesson material, what people have written, and all our books we publish, I mean, all our articles, I my, in myself, I mean, I, uh, my mindset is, is also like that, but then we, I mean, gradually, it might not happen quickly in, within one night, but when we have people with such mindset, it's easy to convince other people as well. Other than that, changing mindsets, can anybody think about any other issues? What about uh, at your institutional level? Uh, other than changing mindsets or getting it accepted? In terms of uh, quality, um, mm -hmm. some mm -hmm. people regard things that are free, so to speak, as maybe not being as high quality as those that are not. Yeah. Uh, and that's also find ways yeah. to ensure a high quality of resources and uh, education. Yeah, that's one concern people always have. They, they think when you have something free, they are concerned about the quality of those things. Okay, this is given free, is it of good quality? But when we, okay, uh, when th that question comes to me from uh, my stakeholders as well, then I ask them, okay, you go and spend money and buy, say, books. Are all those books of good quality? You have spent money, but then there are lots of low quality material out there where you have to buy. Whereas there are lots of good quality material free and open to use. 
so it's the quality how how do you how do you uh, address the issue of quality as educators what do you think? I, I think this is possibly another mindset issue uh, for example i've found that uh, sometimes if i might offer a course for free people aren't going to take it as seriously if i make them pay for it uh, mm -hmm. and often those that sign up for free think that when it comes time to do the course if they've got something better to do they're not going to turn up whereas if they pay for it they're more likely to turn up yeah that's yeah that's again a mindset but we we have to that's sort of a culture also i mean traditionally we think if something is given free that's of low quality but then uh, i think that uh, we have to show uh, now when we are when we show that this is i mean as teachers i think our responsibility is to show students okay good quality material we have to sort i mean when we are prescribing uh, books for students we will always pick up the good ones books or any video or any any resource learning resource we will pick we will um, prescribe or recommend the good ones if we are if we recommend them to buy something in the same manner our responsibility is to search through the resources and identify the good quality ones and point out those things then they will see yes this is the exactly very good quality rather than the book uh, you have bought for money even so you have to show by examples uh, and make them realize that okay so the going to the next one any suggestions to end up this brainstorming session any suggestions um, you might uh, now we talked about the need the benefits uh, the issues, the challenges that you might face, and any suggestions? Now, I, I, I'm asking any suggestions in your this process of uh, developing uh, the OER policy. Now, when there are all these things, uh, based on the things we have discussed, what are your suggestions? Personally, I think we should um, highlight uh, more people like Xu Min's actions, where she's um, really happy to not add copyright onto the end of her works and, you know, show what good it does for other people and also for her own well-being, because, you know, she'll feel good about that as well, as well as sharing education. So the more we can highlight positive actions by, you know, by positive people, and, and how they benefit us, I think the more we'll be able to move forward with OER. Good. Highlight the positive actions and examples, maybe. Right. Okay. That's yeah. a good suggestion. Yeah. Anything else? Any other suggestions? I think for those who benefited from this OER of, of free resources, mm -hmm. um, so to speak, I think they should make some, some kind of an effort in the future to give it back to the community. To share with their ideas, what they learn, they can, they can impart the knowledge to somebody else through these OER ideas. Mm -hmm. Then not too much, not too much emphasis on the copyright in a way. Mm -hmm. You know, and I mean, I'm not as I say, I'm not against copyright. I'm saying mm -hmm. that should, should be, yeah, yeah. But but I, I think it should be really cultivate the uh, the the mentality of sharing while at the same time try to. Put, Try to give yourself a little bit of protection. That's all. Yeah, uh, I I would like to uh, point out here. Sometimes people think when you share, you lose the copyrights, but yes. that's the mis misconception. We have to. I I know at the beginning I had that challenge as well. Many people, well, actually I wanted to make, for example, our we have an uh, we have a journal. I was the journal editor for some time, so I wanted to. Uh, make this uh, under the Creative Commons license. You know, a lot of uh, open access journals are there with the Creative Commons license. But then people were very, uh, very scared because the research, you know, they protect it like, uh, protect very much the research you have done. Uh, so uh, sharing with the Creative Commons license, there was a very concern. Copyright will be gone. Then I had, there were a lot of questions about what happens to the copyrights. But you have to explain and show the copyrights is still there. That's where the attribution comes. Whatever license we use, we have to acknowledge the original author. That's a legal binding. The legal binding is there. So the copyrights will be there. It won't be. But only thing with the copyrights, we are 
uh, sharing and we are giving uh, permission to the others. Actually, we, we as the author, we are giving the permission to the others. So we have the copyright, we just give a permission. Uh, sometimes we have to write, you know, copyrighted materials, you just have to write to people and get permission by email or something. That has been the usual practice now. But now if you openly share with the Creative Commons license, you have already given the permission. So that sort of um, misconceptions we have to uh, wipe out. That's our responsibility. So that's a good suggestion, yes. Uh, any actually, other suggestions? Actually, what I've done in the past, I put my email address and my contact email address, and then mm -hmm. I welcome anybody to contact me if they want more ideas and sharing ideas with me. And then, mm -hmm. I, I, and then and I, I did have people contacted me about, about certain things that I've written in, in the commentary paper. And, mm -hmm. and, and um, it was really a fantastic experience because, because as much as they learn from me, I learned a lot from them too, you know. This, the yeah. sharing is so, the, the, sh the sharing experience is so fantastic. It's not, it's not something that you can be measured by the copyright. Mm. Yeah, so what, we are, what you are saying is, I think that's another good uh, um, uh, suggestion. Encourage more communication and collaboration among each other so that you realize together it benefits everybody. When you share everything and come up with a good product, uh, which is share, I mean, you can keep on improving as well with open license. So encouraging communication and collaboration is a good suggestion, yes. So, okay, so uh, because of the time, I will just uh, stop about the brainstorming session. So I think, um, thank you very much for everybody uh, who um, came up with a lot of ideas. Uh, I tried my best to uh, put everything in the Google uh, Docs. So please feel free to add to it uh, because you all will have access. I think that's a good working document for all of us that will be very helpful when you are developing your policy. So. Now I think we realize this need for an institutional OER policy. We all agree that development of an institutional policy on OER would help in making teachers, learners, and the greater community more sensitized, sensitized to the availability of free usage of openly licensed educational materials in a productive manner. I think this sentence uh, cover the whole lot of ideas that emerged in our discussion and the need for relevant policy frameworks and implementation strategies you have to think about and you have to address them to make educational resources freely available for reuse and repurposing through the use of open licenses. So that's why you need to be very clearly knowledgeable about the open licenses and what are the uh, permissions given, what you can do, what you cannot do, and how to make, how to adapt, how to use them, how to reuse them, how to repurpose them, and the terminology to be used. So it's very important to make sure that all these are clear and all the stakeholders are clear about these concepts and the words as well. Okay, so I would also like to suggest you all to do. I mean, you are all senior um, academic members of this institution. So you are going to uh, embark on a new uh, thing to do, develop an OER policy for the institution, which you need to get the Senate approval and maybe the council approval, some barriers before you um, implement it. So I feel it would be a good suggestion for you all to do a SWOT analysis. What do you think about that? Madhu, what do you think about that idea? Yes, uh, I, uh, I agree with you that um, uh, universities should, should do a SWOT analysis. Many of the ideas have already uh, come and mm -hmm. uh, it has been put on the Google Doc. So strengths, uh, what you said in the SWOT analysis, we can take from there. Yes, some of the ideas are there. We should do this part. Yeah. So, uh, Andy, do you agree with this? Is this all right with you all? Uh, which Andy are you talking to? Oh, <laughs> oh I one Andy, sorry. 
<laughs> Sorry, uh, I don't know there were <laughs> two Wendy's. I mean you. Uh, okay, whoever. I mean, it doesn't matter. Okay, so do you think this is possible for you all to do a SWOT analysis? You know the strengths. Now, before you do this, what are the strengths? To, now, you have this objective of developing an institutional OER policy, right? So, to achieve this objective, what are the strengths you have? What are the strengths you have? I think, for example, now already your your this group, this group itself is a strength, because now you all are uh, strong people with a positive, very positive mindset, and with good knowledge about OER and having the need for an OER policy. So I think this group is, itself is a strength, and you have the support from Semca. That's a strength as well. Right? So think about the strengths you have and the uh, weaknesses. Okay, what sort of weaknesses might be there? Right? So maybe if you don't have, I don't know, can, can you think about any weaknesses that might, you will have to think about that because this is your context. Um, the weaknesses could be the human capital. There's some people were not willing to share. Mm -hmm. yeah, they, don't have the, they don't share the same value. Mm -hmm. Same value yeah. of the OER. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But on the, by the same token, the, the strength, one of the strength could be a very competent, a competent uh, human capital, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, so, that, so that's the thing. So you have to come up with these strengths with, and opportunities. Of course, we talked about the need and the benefits, the opportunities it will give you as a university. So you would be able to share. Now, now for example, for my university, once we started sharing these things, we were able to, you know, uh, showcase uh, what we are doing, you know, openly sharing uh, our research and our le le even some of our courses, the foundation level course materials are released as OER. Initially, the lecturers were reluctant, yes, but then once you uh, created that sort of a culture, that sort of a culture of sharing, now even next week I have been requested to um, raise awareness among a group of lecturers, how to make their material OER, right? How to, uh, so, so, during, so we have lots of these sort of interactions with staff so that you show the opportunities because it, when you share, as somebody is very right, he said, if you do something, you keep it under lock and key, nobody sees, you have done a lot of hard work, but you have not shared it, but you are very protective and keeping it with you. What's the point? Somebody asked me, what's the point of that? Now, when you share it, your name will be there. Everybody will know. Now, for example, Madhu told me, Madhu told that I have done a lot of research, but a lot of, most of them are published as OER. So it's, I mean, it's available for anybody to read, not only read, they do anything with it. And similarly, call is sharing, call and same Kabo, sharing lots of resources. So this pool of resources, so this they they gain a good name for that. Everybody knows, okay, Call and Semka, they are doing good work of sharing resources, a lot of good quality materials are there. So that's an opportunity. So gain your institutional the recognition. And that's an institution, right? So when you share quality resources, your the name of your institution will be uh, highlighted. Uh, and as individuals also, because individual authors' names will be there the university's name will be there. So that's an, I feel that's an opportunity to showcase what you're, the good things you're doing, isn't it? Agree? Totally then, agree. Okay, then uh, there may be threats as well. Can you think of any threats? Can you think of any threats once you uh, have an OER policy and start uh, releasing uh, material as OER? I, I, I would see the, th the threat as um, the discontinuing of the competent human capital because human capital in the institution can come and go. So it's just the, ex we can have the, ex we can tap on the explicit knowledge. It's mm -hmm. the tacit knowledge that's difficult to be, to be really tapped on. 
I think that is to me when you talk about the educational in uh, education, you're talking about the intellectual property, mm -hmm. the tacit knowledge is difficult to be uh, coded and therefore mm -hmm. even protected because once once the lecture is gone, it's gone. You know, mm -hmm. even bring with the tacit knowledge will live together with this person. So my mm -hmm. my main concern is how to how to record or how to keep a record on the tacit knowledge of these highly competent intellectual people. Mm -hmm. I think that's a very good point. Yeah. So uh, do you consider the, it as a threat? Oh, yes, that's a threat because uh, that's a threat because the, um, the intellectual people can come and go. They can come and go. And then there's mm -hmm. no way that you can you can retain them forever. Yeah. So you need to really do something that they left behind their IT property within your institution, even while they're gone. That's why I say that the, the, the explicit knowledge is not a problem, mm -hmm. but it is the tacit knowledge which, which actually complements the explicit knowledge. The mm -hmm. tacit, the tacit sometimes is even more crucial than the, uh, than the explicit. Yeah, I think that's a very good point. Yeah. Now, when you uh, talk about these people, very intellectual people, and they are coming and serving the university, as a university employee, when you develop something, okay, who owns it? I mean, while you are working at the university, we develop a lot of course materials, pre, uh, publications for the university as, as a working. So, who owns that ultimately when we do it for the university? In the past, when I when I prepare my own course materials, if the university paid me for a certain sum, just a minimum sum, and it was state it was state in the uh, in the agreement that the IP will remain with the university, not mm. with not with the uh, not with the authors. I think yeah. it, should, it yeah. is to be fair to the university in a way. But yes. for me personally, I have no problem to give my IP to the university. I'm not only giving to the university; I'm giving to the stakeholders. The future students. Yeah, I think okay. so. That, that's what I am asking about because when we are working to the university, we have this uh, sort of mutual contract. Like, I mean, we get a salary or we get a payment. So the university has the ownership. Yeah. I mean, our university has that. So we need to be aware of what sort of policies we have yeah. at the university. And we also contract, you know, different other people. Sometimes we uh, contract external people, not the internal people, external people, you contract them for uh, say lesson writing or material development. But then if they are doing for a payment to the university, you make the payment, then the ownership is with the university. Then who is going to, okay, then if the university has the copyrights, the ownership, then university can take the decision whether you are going to make it OER yeah or not, because that's university's property, isn't it? So, uh, okay, so uh, that, that's, uh, those are some ideas, I mean, some food for thought. Uh, I would like you to do this SWOT analysis also before you do the uh, thing. So, uh, we have a lot of supportive resources, uh, especially the call SEMCA OER policy template. Uh, I believe you all have access to that. That has been shared with the original document I have shared uh, with the work plan. At the end, there are other, I would like you to go through these other things also, like the uh, UNESCO country policy template. Then there's this Creative Commons OER policy registry, which shows how many policies uh, have been developed and published uh, overall in the global. Uh, you can go through these links and see, and there are tools for policy development, lots of resources. These are all OER, right? So there are lots of resources for you all to uh, get um, get ideas and uh, have guidance, but basically we are going to use the call SEMCA OER policy template. So in my next uh, few minutes, I am going to uh, go with you uh, through the different elements of the call SEMCA policy template. And also I have shared with you, as I mentioned, some sample example uh, policies like the Wawasan Open Universities policy originally developed in 2012. Uh, then our open university policy, the first version, 2015, the second version. Actually, the second version, uh, if I may, we had another reason because 
all universities were required whatever policies we are developing the government gave a uh, direct uh, direct government directive was they are, they prepared a national policy format so the, there was a requirement all policies to be um, fitting in with the national policy format so that is a little bit different from the call format so that's why when in 2020 we were asked to uh, make all our policies into the national policy format so that was a government requirement so again but the same content we have maybe the headings were different the organization was a little bit different so we have to abide by the national policy format but so we did that according to national policy format and with some enhancement so that so i have put both there so you could see then uh, this Uttarakhand Open University, which uh, recently uh, they have developed with SEMCA, I uh, believe, and uh, USP policy, uh, which they have developed with support from call. So these are the um, samples I have given. Um, okay. Just a second, Shironika, they can also look um, at the policies which the universities in Malaysia, they have developed. So there okay. are almost seven or eight universities, if I'm oh. not mistaken, maybe there are more. So okay. how do they have developed, they can also see and that policies must be available on the institution's website. So okay. that can also see that what the Malaysia is doing. It. Yeah. So from the national, I um, mean, country level context, uh, you can, yeah. That's a good idea. I only, the Babasan uh, University. Uh, yeah, you developed that. that. I have got. Uh, but yeah. then um, if you can share, I mean, the Google Drive is, uh, Google Doc is there. Uh, I'll put a page for resources, additional resources with all these things as well. Then any of you, when you if you find other policies in Malaysian context, anybody can share there. So then everybody can have a look at that as well. Okay, so that's my first part. Uh, now, uh, before moving forward, uh, anybody need to clarify or make any comment? The next one is to in introduce the call policy template because that's what you're going to work on tomorrow. Excuse me, I just would like to send a message to you that Dr. Andy, uh, Professor Andy Liu, will just step out for a while. Oh, okay. Andy, will just step out. Okay, okay, it's okay. Thank you. Uh, okay, so shall I move on to the next one then? Okay, and now uh, I'm going to introduce to you the call SEMCA institutional OER policy framework. Now, um, this policy framework has some key components. Uh, now, my expectation is um, I would like now, I, I, I would like to know how this would work because I, as I mentioned at the very beginning, this is going to be your policy. So you are going to work on this. But I, uh, to expedite the process, I would like to have some subgroups working on different aspects. Uh, so how many are there actually from the help university? Do we have a number? I mean, uh, the, all the participants, are, because I don't know how many are actually from the help university in this group how many small groups can we have can we have like five small groups four or five who can help me with that manas yes Sirulika, please How, how many how many from how many participants all together from help university how many groups small groups can we make there, uh, there are uh, we can we can uh, there are around 20 is here they can be yeah. in, a, in different groups so uh, we can make four groups four groups okay so okay so uh, i will just go through the different elements then i would like uh, individuals to 
because I don't want to group, uh, I don't want I'm, uh, me grouping, rather than me grouping you, I would like you all to group yourselves because you all know each other and who would like to work on which aspect. But finally, everybody will be coming together. That's why I created this Google Doc uh, and shared with everybody uh, to um, complete different sections by different groups. Uh, and then everybody can look at each other's work and comment on it. And then the final document be compiled as a collaborative effort. And I also can uh, give my feedback and you know make suggestions likewise. Uh, okay, so I will just go through the key elements so that uh, before grouping, we will just go through the key elements and then, um, then see how we can group it, right? Okay, so according to this, the calls policy can template, I, sorry? Uh, can, I, can I share uh, the link here in the chat box itself so that uh, people can click there and go to the group directly? Uh, share Google, which one, which link? Google Doc, Google Doc. Ah, yeah, sure, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that uh, uh, all can go there immediately and they can, uh, they can put their name. Ah, uh, right, that's a good idea. They want to be. Good idea, okay. good idea. Please share, so, please share it. In the please, my friends, so just click on this uh, Google, uh, Google Doc. Simultaneously, you go to the um, uh, other environment, uh, Doc will open. But your Zoom will be continued, no problem. It will be minimized automatically. And you can click on the Zoom so that it uh, can come up accordingly. So you can also, yeah. please so, uh, copy the uh, uh, go this call template link also so that they have the full details there. Is it all right? Can I continue? Depending on this, I say I'm more committed. Now this is a ready to use template that uh, Call has prepared a template uh, to help uh, institutions uh, to create the OER policy. So that is available in this link, uh, which uh, I believe uh, Manas will be sharing with you. Yeah. Then I have uh, created these sections based on that. I have not copied everything because you might, uh, I just copied the topics, uh, main topics and subtopics, but then you can take whatever you need to get from the template and adapt according to your needs or your requirements. Now, for example, it starts with the preamble. Now, obviously the preamble have, has to be prepared by you. The members of Help University, academic members, because that preamble should give a detailed descriptions about the institution, its vision and mission, and describe the rationale behind the adoption of OER policy. So that preamble has to be written by somebody. Uh, okay, you have to identify someone uh, who can write the preamble nicely. So someone can uh, put the name under preamble, one or two people uh, who would like to write the preamble. That's an easy, easy part because you already know. Uh, I think even you already might be having that in some other documents. Then the next one is about definitions. Because this concept is new to many people, the policy has to give some definitions on the um, key words that we are using. For example, some people might not be knowing the definition of OER. So we have to give the definition of OER. And there are other keywords coming in, right? So like Creative Commons licenses or um, uh, public domain, uh, there are different uh, types of, so any definitions that you think which you are going to include in the policy document, 
when you do it also, you will see this is a keyword that need to be defined in the definition section. Maybe the definition section might, uh, you might have to do it at the end after developing the other sections. But that, that, is, that is an important section where you have to give clear definitions, preferably with sources, uh, because for example, OER definition, the UNESCO definition, uh, you have to give the source, acknowledge the source, and any other relevant definitions from reliable sources, so that uh, you, you are clear about the concept here. Everybody who is reading the policy is clear. So this is important, preamble and definitions. Then the next one is really about the policy. Okay. 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 Shall, can I go on? Okay. So the policy, there are in under the policy, section three is now section one is about the preamble. It's about your institution. Section two is about keywords. So there might be like five, six, seven number of keywords with definitions. Right? And you might even have an operational definition there, what you are meaning in this document, like we do in a thesis or sometimes we have the operational definitions, likewise. Now, this is the important part, the policy itself. Now, from number three onwards, it's policy. Now, number three, have it has several subsections, right? So the first one is about the policy declaration. That is, you have to declare, now this is an institutional policy. So the entity institution has to take this responsibility or, of, or declaring because the whole purpose of this policy is to promote and implement this creation, use, uh, and adoption of OER within the open licensing framework. So this is the sentence given in the call template, but you might you might uh, adapt uh, it uh, if you think you need to change it in a different, I mean, with different words. But the idea is that the institution is making, at the beginning, you are making this declaration that institution is going to promote at the implementation of OER within the open licensing framework, right? So I, I have given the, uh, some parts of the real uh, template, but when you look at the full template, it will have more details, 3.1. Then 3.2 is about policy statements. Now this is another important, this is very important because here you are going to give in bullet points, bullet points or in, not in bullet points actually, uh, in um, numbered, uh, numbered points, like 3.2 policy statements, you will have 3.2.1, 3.2.2, because this is a legal document, you know, this is a legal document, so you must have every statement numbered, because if you are referring to any statement, there must be a number. So that's why under 3.2 policy statements, there will be 3.2.1, 3.2.2, likewise. I have given one example. There are several statements given in the call policy uh, template, but you can read that and you can, we have adapted that according to our requirements. So that, that will, that's why I need groups, some small groups working on these policy statements. That's how we did. There were, there was a group of uh, four individuals working on this policy in my university, myself and some others uh, from different faculties. The librarian was there. Uh, and from the instructional design, the university course development committee chair was there. Likewise, there were like uh, five people, four to five people working on these things because this, day, this will take some time. It will take several rounds of revisions. You do it and then uh, you discuss, you look at the examples and you see what you really want to say. These are very important. The policy statements are very important that you cover all required aspects. So this is just one example, one example of a policy statement, the management, because this is an institutional policy, right? 
So this is how call has worded is the management the first uh, according to the call template 3.2.1 this is 3.2.1 the management will promote foster and reward all efforts towards the adoption integration and sharing of oer in course design development quality assurance and delivery that's the first statement the second statement says the your name institutional name help university help university as publisher and copyrights owner that has to be emphasized because that that's that's the core thing because the institution has the copyrights as the publisher of any material which you are going to uh, release as oer as the copyright owner will decide on the content to be published as oer in consultation with relevant faculty departments division for example if my faculty uh, has published uh, say a lesson material and we would like to uh, pub sorry, we would like to um, publish it as an oer the ins we have to get because the institution has the copyrights they will approve it this can or approve of uh, they will uh, there, there has to be a mutual consent uh, with the relevant faculty or the department and the university authority whatever the we have to come to the responsibility later who is going to be responsible for making decisions anyway a decision has to be made okay is this content are we going to publish this as an oer right because the university is the publisher copyright owner so the decision has to be made by the university the university means some authority some the university has to decide which authority that should be as well but in consultation with the relevant faculty department or division because some might not like to uh, release all material some materials as oer so in our university also same we we don't release all materials as oer but their decisions have to be made at different levels but the university takes the final decision so there are some other statements like that this is very important policy statements then the policy objectives so why Pol the policy objectives uh, again we uh, they are in the template it gives several um, objectives uh, for example to formulate the necessary strategic outputs inputs outputs tasks and performance indicators to achieve oer creation adoption adaptation and integration in the development and delivery of courses now in a policy each word is important each word in a statement is important and the way you present is important and it has to be understood by the stakeholders clearly so that's why we we have to look at i mean we can't do this quickly it will take some time and it, it not an individual person that's why it's good to do as a small group of people because different people will be looking from different angles but finally mutually agreeing on the most suitable way of presenting it call is going giving a lot of good guidelines but of course you can change it according to your needs so there are several objectives given so you can decide similarly like 3.3.31 3.3.2 like this the next one is the scope and applicability because any policy will have a scope to which scope this is applicable so within the university now if this is related to course material which are developed by the university course material might be developed by various entities in the university so it should be applicable to all it's maybe academic and some academic support in our university there are some academic support departments also creating some resources not only the academic departments and faculties for example we have an education technology center so they are they develop videos audios which might be released as oer okay. so 
so applicability scope and applicability so we you have to decide on the uh, who uh, and uh, which entities and who as well as i mentioned before internal academics will be developing material which might be released as well yeah and there may be external academics or contract staff now we also at our open university also we have a lot of contract staff who are writing lessons for us but once they write and give us i mean when we pay them the university has the copyrights but their names will be there but then we have decided to get a consent you know uh, when uh, some sort of an agreement consent that if we are deciding to release this as an oer in the contract we have to mention that they have given the consent because they are the original author uh, it's it's more, more of a ethical thing uh, so that uh, with their consent we are going to release this material as an oer so all content developers internal external uh, anybody whom we are contracting uh, should be made aware of this uh, process and what sort of material what types of material now as you remember from the definition of oer it's not only digital material it can be digital or non digital material so those things have to be mentioned the scope of the material so earlier we talked about the scope of the entities scope of the individuals scope of the materials like it's not only print material there may be multimedia uh, audio video animations different types of material digital non digital so you have to mention what sort of materials uh, scope of the material and okay uh, what else uh, materials and uh, if if you are okay now for example we have certain instances where we have developed material in collaboration with another institution uh, now we have developed materials in collaboration with semca say for example so we have to have a mutual agreement okay semca says uh, whatever materials now called and semca has this policy whatever material they develop will be released with a creative commons license so in when we are signing an agreement in a collaborative joint work we have to be we have to be sure to indicate that statement that if we are going to release it it, it as an oer that both parties are in collaborative ventures that both parties or all parties are um aware aware and they agree with this decision so that's where um, uh, especially the partnerships uh, and collaborative work so scope and applicability is also very important aspect to consider and write very carefully thinking about all uh, different ways so call guidelines other than call guidelines you can look at other examples of uh, other universities uh, uh, statements also then you can get an idea and you can think on our in on your own uh, what would be specific to your institution as well then another important thing about the this is very important copyrights and license now copyrights is with the institution there's no issue with that but the license now the institution will have to decide now there is a range of creative commons licenses as i started at the very beginning which one you want to use right so you will mention the there, there are two options actually there are two options you will have to the institution has to decide which option you want to take one option is the individual faculty or department will decide on the license that they uh, they would like to have in their materials but that has to be vetted by the internal quality review or whatever board that the authority the other option is to have a general license for any oer material developed by the university now my experience we also discussed about these two options at length because some might like to have cc by ndsa 
some might like to have CCBYSA, some might like to have CCBYNC, non-commercial. So if you give different departments or individuals to decide, that's also a way, I mean, that's also one option, but then we discussed a lot in different fora and finally decide that might create, I mean, my experience, that might create a lot of um, issues or problems when the university is trying to decide because if so many alternatives come, uh, that might create a problem. So we, our university, we decided we will go for one license for the whole university. But then if you have to select one of these two options, whether you are going to give the responsibility to different faculty departments or whether you are going to categorize different, some institutions I have seen, they have categorized. This sort of materials will have this license, this sort of materials will have this license as likewise. But in our university, we have decided whatever materials we have decided to uh, release as OER will have just one license, that is the university's decision to use CC BYSA, right? So that's a decision you have to make. And what is the license also, you have to make a decision. As I said, that's not an easy task because that has to come through a lot of discussion and mutual agreement. Okay, so then I just want to just want to add one thing. What experience I had in Indian open universities, mm -hmm. some of the open universities, one or two I know that they what they have done is that only out of let's say six schools, like School of Education, School of Social Sciences, School of Humanities or Journalism, they have done uh, this policy for only three schools. So mm -hmm. like uh, suppose a School of Education doesn't want to mm -hmm. have go for their material as an OER. So, but the School of Social Sciences, they want that their material on everything, all the resources should, including video, audio, they should go as OER. Mm -hmm. So they have done. So the point which you are making is very relevant that uh, uh, one has to incorporate that in policy. And then maybe after an year or two years, if the other schools or other divisions mm -hmm they want and one can revise it. Yeah, the, thank you, Madhu. I think that's, a, that's an interesting point, actually. I didn't know that different schools might be, or different uh, faculties uh, might be uh, having different, that can happen, yes. That can happen, but uh, as you say, after some time, they also might like to uh, use. So that's why we are reviewing and updating. Uh, but yes. that reviewing and updating uh, the of a policy will happen like every three years or every five years. You can't be reviewing and updating every day, you know. Uh, so uh, once when you're developing, uh, I think you have to make some crucial decisions at the initial point because you can't be updating always, right? What do you think? Yes. So, so I just wanted to share that because I can name one of the open universities in uh, Ahmedabad, India, uh, Gujarat. So they, one of the schools, they said uh, that again, the my, it was only the mindset of the faculty, nothing else. They said, no, we don't want to make it as an open resource. So they said, okay, I don't, uh, we, we do we will not do it. But the vice chancellor insisted that she will do it for the rest of the schools. So mm -hmm. they made the policy like that. So I just wanted to share that experience. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, Manas, you want to say anything? One more, one more example. Uh, it's, uh, Metaji Subhas Open University in 2014, they come up with their uh, OER policy. So in that policy, they have taken only three schools. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is uh, School of Professional Studies, School of Vocational Studies, and uh, School of Education. Right after, uh, after in the in the year 2016-17, they adopt uh, adopted means entire uh, university adopted OER policy, including mm -hmm. other rest of the schools. And uh, in the licensing also, creative common licensing also, 
earlier they were having only single licensing policy that is ccby ncsa mm -hmm. and now they uh, developed a little bit more open up with ccby sa so uh, and as you said very rightly uh, sironika the uh, policy cannot be uh, reviewed and revised in a frequency manner so uh, they had uh, as per the policy they had for the every 3 years they need to review the policy mm -hmm. after uh, then they will uh, do the modifications mm -hmm. so in 2014 they adopted policy 2016 17 they reviewed policy and adopted revised one so this is this is which they you know, within the policy mandate because policy uh, frame uh, what is called the document itself says that you need to be have to have the decision when uh, you will be go for the revision as per the uh, semca call template so uh, that revision issue need to be also discussed very strategically institution need, uh, need to be uh, take a take a point where they need to agree that okay every three years or two years we need to revise the policy and um, in that they can they can also think into that uh, what will be the scope of the revision that is also need to um, discuss this is the yeah. Yeah, thank, thank you very much for sharing those ideas. I think they are very useful. I'm sure that's very useful for all the participants. So that uh, different uh, experiences uh, of uh, examples, uh, I think uh, you realize the uh, you realize the gravity of this work. I mean, it's you have to um, pay uh, good attention of the statements or the things you are uh, making here because for three years it will be effective. Uh, until the next review cycle, so that also has to be mentioned. So once you decide on these things, so these are all decisions to be taken at higher levels, like senior management level or different universities, the decisions, decisions taken bodies are there, like the Senate or Council. So th these decisions have to be taken and uh, abide with them. Then once you decide on the license, uh, that has to be clearly indicated in the format because people when when you are releasing the material as OER this declaration has to be there in that material so everybody has to use the same wording that has to be very clearly given the license uh, the format of how you are declaring the license you have uh, you are you have adopted right so it has to indicate that the copyrights license also because you have to start the copyrights is there otherwise people forget the copyrights is not there copyright that is c you know with the circle and the year and the name of the institution so that's the copyrights are there but except we are otherwise noted that is also put just in case there are some other things where they are where we may have used uh, certain sections with copyrights, say for example a diagram uh, or something. So that's why this uh, statement is put there to safeguard maybe, except where otherwise noticed. Um, the license, uh, this work is licensed under the term of the terms of the Creative Commons. Then you have to specifically mention the license that you are using. That is with the CCBY. That is the most uh, most uh, open one is CCBY or CCBY SA or CCBY NDSA. ND is not a very open one. Uh, but then you once you decide, you have to indicate what is the license, and also you have to give a link to the license in the Creative Commons dot org website because. Uh, to weave a copy if when we just give the name only people will not those who are not aware even those who are aware will forget what's the meaning of this so always you have to give a link to the real license on the creative commons website so that it will take you to the relevant license which will give the all the uh, detailed explanations the legal bindings and what you can do what you can't do all those things will be there right uh, and also it's 
important to mention, I think that's another important thing Cole has mentioned here about the use of logos. Because as in institutions, we have our own unique logos. Now, in our documents, we use the logos. But when, say, our uh, materials, but when we, uh, when we uh, make them OER, the logos are not permitted, permitted uh, to be used as an OER because logo is unique to that specific institution. So that's why we also have included this statement uh, that uh, reserves the copyrights of the institutional logo used in all of its materials and does not permit use of its logo without written permission for derivatives of its work. I mean, they can use it, I mean, they can just reproduce it, but no derivatives for the logos because then that will create some issues. Then uh, the template also talks about the quality assurance and review system. So this is the other important thing, which, which uh, entity or which board will be uh, given the authority or will be in charge of the quality assurance of this whole process, right? So here they are suggesting the OER quality review board uh, will be there, but different universities have uh, different names, right? So uh, in our case, we have specifically mentioned who has the response, okay, the responsibility will come later, uh, but the um, policy um, how, how to uh, who who will be uh, made who will make sure that the quality assurance of these materials are adhered now for example we have in our university a uh, uh, quality uh, assurance center a Q, uh, qac uh, which is under the ugc's quality assurance council so all quality related matters are uh, their responsibility so uh, likewise there are the course development committees are there then there are lots of other entities which are related to this course material development so these things have to be very clearly identified and specified in the policy uh, document then also uh, the liability a disclaimer that is uh, what uh, this call um, template is giving uh, as 3.7 that a disclaimer saying that these materials are for educational purposes only because these are these OER is uh, and also that we have may we have tried because now we as an institution we are publishing but several other authors or individuals or entities have written uh, and uh, written and uh, contributed in different ways but the university now the university is having the copyrights uh, or the ownership you now now they are they are the disclaimer is saying every effort has been made to ensure that the information is correct and the authors and publishers do not assume any liability you know that sort of li uh, sentence on liability Mm -hmm. and uh, when you read it if you will say i'm not going to read the whole thing and again you mentioned about it does not uh, derivatives of the work are not authorized to use the logo again it's mentioned there so that's about the liability and finally the institutional arrangements uh, not finally the yeah the final one final uh, element is institutional arrangements how these uh, materials which are produced or released as OER will be um, maintained. So usually an online institutional repository will be there where all OER produced by the university will be hosted, right? And it will be in the university website. There will be a link to the online institutional repository. So it's, it will clearly indicate OER repository or I mean you will decide on the name but it will indicate that uh, we we have as OUSL OER so under OUSL OER we we put uh, whatever we are publishing under that one so that will be a repository so who is going to maintain the repository the responsibilities have to be there uh, the quality assurance then uploading and maintaining the repository that sort of the, all those are 
different from institution to institution. So that's why that's called institutional arrangements, but it's important to mention who is responsible for what. Otherwise, finally, if there's nobody responsible for certain things, it's going to create issues. So better to state very clearly who is responsible for what, who is responsible for maintaining an online repository, who is maintaining of quality assurance, who is maintained by uh, reviewing or revising and updating that sort of okay. So you can think about different institution arrangements and indicate all those things there. Okay, so that's, that's it um, about this uh, calls policy template. I'm sorry, I think it was a little bit uh, lengthy session. Uh, however, I think you are clear about the aspects. Now, my expectation for tomorrow. <laughs> now, my expectation for tomorrow. So before that, uh, anybody would like to say any word or anything before I say my expectation? Any questions anyone has so that um, Sharonika can uh, ask us for tomorrow's work, if I say in a very language, a simple language or a crude language, homework. Uh, so what we'll be doing and tomorrow we can decide and before we close for today. Any questions anyone has? I have a statement. Don't set too high expectations. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Now, Simka has given me deadlines, <laughs> so you better, you will have to discuss it because I have been assigned with this task with some deadlines, right? So <laughs> that's it, up to it's Simka. Actually, it's actually <laughs> very is um is really is eye opener for me to understand the details of these uh, policies and agreement, especially on the disclaimer part. You know, and 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 uh, it's really it's a baby step for personally for me. It's a baby step in terms of in terms of uh, coming up with the agreements and the policy, which is could be it is legally binding anyway. So you know, mm. because I'm an, I'm not a lawyer, but but I, I think the subject content that, like what you say is very mm. very 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 crucial. Like what you say, the disclaimer and then the responsibility of the each individual parties concerned, like the departments. Who's, who set the policy on the, on 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 the copyright and things like that? I think this one got to be spelled out very clearly because this is legally binding, you know. So I, I, it's an eye opener for me personally, and in terms of the legal side, and um, but um, I think it has been really really um, enriching for me to uh, to 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 know that I have you on the other part of the world to share my mm -hmm. my my views about sharing of the underprivileged you know so i've been wanting to say that for years you know on this one but i'm so glad today i had i had the opportunity to um, to share it with you and then you you agree with me i'm so i'm so grateful for that thank you so um, i will i'm happy that uh, uh, about that those words and now uh, actually i know it's very comprehensive uh, uh, by tomorrow you can't do I, I i know because i have been involved in this process but my expectation <laughs> is not very high um, we have uh, opened up the google doc right now uh, i have explained to you the whole thing actually call, this call semka thing gives the very good guideline and they Actually, statements are there. It's a template, right? It's a template. So you just have to work in groups. Now, what I would like to, I don't know, I, I see in the chat, some people have already left for other meetings uh, and other things. Well, uh, I know as academics, we have all this. I, I had two meetings today, but I managed to send somebody else for those, but because uh, this date was fixed uh, before those meetings were scheduled. I know we all have all these other uh, workload. Uh, still, this, this, this is very important for your university. I would like you all to um, form into sm uh, small um, subgroups. I don't know who is going to take the responsibility of making the subgroups, but uh, Mana said uh, the Google Doc people can put in their names where they would like to contribute. I think that's a good that's a good uh, way of doing it, but I hope everybody will put your name somewhere. 
Uh, and tomorrow, uh, I am not going to talk much today. I think I've talked quite a lot. So tomorrow, I hope the small groups to work and present, you know, that sort of interactive session for tomorrow under each of these uh, sections, especially on the policy section. I think the institutional, the preamble and definitions can wait. All right. The preamble and definitions we can do at the end, very end. We have to con uh, con concentrate on part section three onwards, the policy itself. So I would like people to put on their names and if you can start working from today itself, very good. And tomorrow, uh, by the end of tomorrow, my expectation is to have a very, maybe it might be a very draft, very initial, but framework uh, for us to move forward. May I know what is the, what is the actual title of this document? Sorry, I think what? the link is shared, uh, Manas. Now, what, what is the title for this document? Sorry? Is, is it a policy document? What is the actual title? Of this title now, okay. Institutional OER policy development. Institute, it's Google Doc. Uh, I think the link is shared. Uh, Dr. Manas shared the link. Yeah. Uh, uh, let, me, let me clear for all, the, all our colleagues at Health University. Uh, my friends, just you click on the chat box. Very quick exercise we can do. Uh, just click on the chat box where there is a link. Uh, docs.google.com I shared I shared means you can see the um, name that Senka Zoom at call.org uh, where I am remotely managing this so I, I put this link which is uh, uh, Shironika is uh, managing this link uh, Google Doc and it is an open Google Doc so if you open then immediately you can start editing or putting your comments and uh, you can start writing on that. That can be possible. This is one. Another one for your reference, uh, I have shared in, uh, OER policy template which has been developed by Call Sankra in 2016. That link I provided as well as what document also attached uh, in the attached uh, uh, what is called chat box you can download from there so this this will be best for you and on the basis of that what shironika shared as google doc she shared all the components and dimensions in separately so put your name wherever you will feel comfortable to contribute the uh, which section you want to contribute you can be in the multiple places also. It is also possible yeah. you can be in the multiple places. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. So we can, what we can do, this exercise, uh, Shilonika can also be in that uh, Google Doc. So you can also look into that after this evening in your time and afternoon from our time. And we will uh, support remotely whatever you are doing, you people are, wherever necessary, we will also provide support. And by tomorrow morning when we will meet in uh, Indian and Sri Lankan, Sri Lankan time and uh, afternoon in Malaysian time, when we will meet virtually, that moment we will discuss on the work which has been done. It is not necessary yeah, that all work. things need to be done, but we need to discuss whatever we were doing. Means we need, end of the day, Sirunika need to be satisfied, okay, what we have discussed, some involvement is there, and we are progressing towards that. And as he said that, very rightly, this is a policy document for the health university. This is not a cup of tea for the overnight, we can change the scenario. It will take a little time, but no doubt, every activity, every work, exercise has some deadline. So we need to meet that deadline to come out with the first draft. Further, if it is necessary, it can be discussed internally at the health university to further uh, clarify. If you need support in continuously, Simka always with the uh, health university and uh, Shirinika will be happy to uh, extend her support further. So this is just a clarification. I hope yes. I clarified everything. 
Yes, I think it was very clear, Manas. I think all participants uh, who were remaining by now, uh, out of 23, now only 12 participants are there. Uh, <laughs> that's a little bit disappointing. Um, anyway, uh, I hope at least the, to see the names there. Now, if you can do it, I mean, who are remaining, at least put your names. If you can access the document, put your names where you would like to contribute. And uh, I don't know, someone will have to pass. Can we email this to all participants, this link? Do we have the, can we ask Andy to email? Yeah, Professor Andy, uh, Andy will facilitate this one to uh, linking with all the people, those who participated. And I request also Professor Andy, if it is possible, can you give us the list of uh, participants as well as their uh, email IDs so that uh, Shironika can get uh, that a great help. Uh, she can communicate directly to the participants also. No, we can have an um, email group. Uh, yeah, maybe. Uh, yeah, we can have an, yeah. create an email group uh, with all the participants. So that would also be good. But uh, I think if you can, I mean, maybe some now those who have left might not have uh, got the link from the chat box. Uh, so yeah. um, I think if you can ask Andy to uh, inform everybody to check their mail and get the link from there. And uh, I hope they all got the workshop plan, right? Uh, yeah. Because in the workshop plan, all the links are there as well. I mean, links Absolutely. for the resources. Uh, I will add them to this um, document also. I mean, I will put a resources page uh, and then it will be easy. But uh, I would, as Dr. Manan said, uh, I don't want to see the blank pages tomorrow. Uh, I'd like to see something there. We don't, we won't have a lot of things. I, I know there's no time, but something uh, is better than nothing. So I expect to see something by the time we meet tomorrow so that otherwise there won't be anything to discuss because tomorrow I'm not going to talk. I'm expecting different subgroups to present their work and then based on that we will be discussing. Okay, so I think it's time to wind up now. Uh, thank you very much for all the participants. Uh, see you all tomorrow. Thank you, Professor Shironika. It, uh, it was a very clear uh, very patient and uh, um, explained the how to do the policy document. And the best part was it was very interactive. Uh, Kim, Manpreet and others participated very well. All the, uh, all the questions, all the time they were asking questions. But the last point before we end, definitely just take out one hour today or tomorrow. And any one of you, all of you can put the points under various elements what Sharonika has said. So that tomorrow when we go through the Google Doc, we discuss and then some draft comes out of the end of the day. That's the only expectation from Sharonika. And I'm sure one hour uh, can be spent on this activity. With these words, if Dr. Andy is there, um, uh, if he wants to share something, or we say bye bye for and good evening to our colleagues in Malaysia. And I thank Sharonika uh, a lot for all her efforts. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Kim. So I think yeah. Andy is not here, maybe busy in some meeting. Yeah. So uh, uh, see you all tomorrow. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. Sharonika, thank once again. Thank You're you. Thank you. See you tomorrow. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. We will meet tomorrow. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.